Hello, my name is James Hendry. And my name is Trishala Naidu. We're going to be discussing Safari Snaps, Africam's new game which allows you, as a community member, to tag different species as they appear at our Africam cameras. Each species that you see has a unique rarity score based on how frequently it is seen at one of the cameras. The score may differ from how endangered or rare an animal is in the various locations. Now this is all fun and games. The scoring of each animal shouldn't be taken too seriously, as sometimes we see a rare animal often, and a common animal may not occur on a particular camera. We can't be too pedantic about it. For example, we are very unlikely to see an impala at the black eagle nest. Our top 10 seldom seen animals are those small mammals or animals that just kind of find themselves around the water holes and therefore in front of our camps. So not really water dependent, but they are very amusing and you get to score points by spotting them. So to start us off in the 10th position, we have vervet monkeys. Vervet monkeys, again, are getting a lot of their moisture requirement from their diet. So lots of juicy leaves, lots of fruit, but they will drink if they're around pans. And obviously they're finding themselves around pans because we see them on our camp. So if you see a vervet, you can get yourself 42 points. Next up, we have got the spotted hyena at 42 points. Now the spotted hyena is probably the most water dependent of the hyena species, but it is still not necessary for a hyena to drink every single day. They'll get a lot of moisture from the viscera and blood that they consume, but they will come down to drink. And in fact, you'll probably find them swimming quite frequently in the hotter parts of the year. If you manage to spot a large spotted genet, you can get yourself 44 points. Now, when it comes to genets, there's a lot of confusion because we need to know the difference between a large spotted genet and a small spotted genet in order to take our snaps accurately. So a large spotted genet has large spots and it's the one that we see most often, I would say, in Southern Africa. A small spotted genet has a white spot at the end of its tail or white tip. The large spotted genet does not have that. Now also the small spotted genet has smaller spots and is also known as the common genet. It's quite easy to confuse the two animals, but if you're in doubt, it's almost certainly a large spotted genet. In two decades of taking safaris in the low felt, I have seen very few small spotted genets. So if you're in doubt, it's most likely a large spotted genet. Next up, we have got the black-backed jackal, which will net you an enormous 45 points. Black-backed jackals you'll find in clearings largely, and so those water holes that have big clearings around them, such as the ones at Tau or Cat Eye, you're likely to see a pair of black-backed jackals. A side-striped jackal and a black-backed jackal can be easily confused, particularly at night. But look out for the saddle shape, dark patch of fur, on the black back jackal and remember that a side stripe jackal has quite a bushy tail with a white tip with a lovely 49 points if you spot one is a tree squirrel i love seeing tree squirrels um, but they don't particularly need to come down to the water to drink in fact they they will often drink at at camps and other areas where humans are around and they have no preference for what type of water they drink much like the vervets but if you do manage to spot them they're going to get you 49 points and it'll be entertaining next up we have got the dwarf mongoose and the banded mongoose with 50 points now the dwarf mongoose and the banded mongoose are two mongoose species that live in troops or groups and the dwarf mongoose is unsurprisingly quite small. Uh, the banded mongoose is unsurprisingly quite banded and slightly larger than its dwarf cousin. They are both carnivorous and you will find them knocking about the water, not necessarily to drink, but again, because there's a lot of short grass and those are favorable conditions for the little carnivores to find tasty morsels. Next up, we have a leopard tortoise. And if you see a leopard tortoise on our cams, that'll get you 55 points. That's a good amount of points for an animal that I have a lot of respect for. Next up, we have got slender mongoose, which unsurprisingly, much like their dwarf and banded cousins, are quite slender with a black tail tip. That's something to look out for. They must have a black tail tip, otherwise you're looking at another kind of a mongoose. You'll often find them near water, not so much because they need to drink, but because it's easier to forage near water. They eat reptiles, they eat eggs, they'll eat little crustaceans if they can find them, they'll eat frogs. And so the waterholes are places they like to forage. 
we have the white-tailed mongoose, which is the largest mongoose species that we get in Southern Africa. And you're only going to see them at night because they're nocturnal. They're easy to tell apart from the other mongoose species because A, you'll see them at night. And secondly, they have a bushy tail and they look quite tall. So if you see one of them, that'll get you 58 points. Next up is the common diker, which will net you 60 points. Now, dikers are not particularly rare animals, but they're not water dependent, so they won't come down to the water particularly often. Now, they're most often confused with steenbok. Now, steenbok are much smaller than common diker. They're a rich chestnut color. Diker are a grayish brown color in the areas where our cameras are, but it is quite difficult at night to see the difference. If you are looking front on to a diker, you're likely to see a stripe down the front of the face. Uh, you won't see that on the steenbok. The steenbok has much whiter ears, and so you're likely to see them shining quite nicely in the infrared light. I think James covered pretty much all the differences. One thing that I picked up is that I find that a steenbok has much skinnier legs than a diker. So a steenbok looks like it's got skinny legs, with kind of a fatter body, whereas a diker feels like well-proportioned. Of course, that it only makes sense to you if you see both of them together. Uh, and I hope that you do, so it'll help you tell the difference. So that was our 10 most seldom seen animals at the African waterholes. Get yourself tagging and snapping away.